Okay, welcome to the class. This is Dr. Ashton and welcome to Industrial Organizational Psychology for the spring of 2020. <clears throat> this video lecture is going to be like the lecture at the first day of class where I you know, introduce myself to the class and talk about the course and uh, in addition to that we'll have a couple things on taking an online course. I uh, don't really know how much that's necessary anymore since we've all had online experience, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is a video lecture. Should you take notes? Uh, well, do you take notes during a normal lecture? I hope you do. So you should take notes during this lecture. Uh, one thing I uh, do as a, uh, as a you know, hint or an idea is that I uh, usually watch video lectures at uh, 1.25 or 1.50 speed and then when I hear something that I can't get into my notes or that I missed I slow I you know go back to normal speed and then I go back and listen to it again and uh, that makes it go by quicker but also you need to make sure that you go back and get notes for things that you miss Okay, so an introduction to me. Uh, I'm a social psychologist. Uh, I have uh, been teaching for about 35 years or so now. Uh, started at my, uh, Miami University. Oh, I need my pointer. Uh, where I got my PhD and taught at Wittenberg and Wright State. And I've been at York since uh, 2003. Uh, teach the social psych and methods and the uh, I.O. courses, I.O. consumer behavior and organizational behavior. Uh, some of the research I've done recently, uh, you know, a paper I finished up, a chapter I finished up a couple years ago, What Would Hermes Do? A Jungian Perspective on the Trickster and Business Ethics. Uh, I've been doing research on fandoms and trust in the government. Uh, you know, published something on the Lebowski uh, achievers, uh, you know, about 10 years ago, and I'm working on the follow-up piece for uh, truckies, and I'm, you know, doing research on defensive attributions and sexual assault situations, and uh, publishing that, you know, randomly. And besides that academic background, I have a management background. I was the Associate Director of Community Programs at a family service agency. Uh, I was the Executive Director of a Community Leadership Association, and I've served in several different leadership positions on boards and as coordinators of projects. And so that's me, and let's talk about taking an online course. Uh, and I've you know, had these uh, questions up before in previous semesters. Now I'm just questioning whether or not they're going to be useful now that we've all been online. But you, know, you have, need to ask yourself, have you taken a 100% online course before? Have you taken hybrid classes before? Uh, were they easy? Were they enjoyable? Uh, in in-person classes, uh, when you had Blackboard assignments, was it easy to do? Was it was Blackboard understandable? Were they fun? And how well do you work by yourself? How are your study skills? Uh, how are your soft skills? That is, being organized and making sure that you keep an eye on schedules. Uh, are they strong? And if you answered no to any of the above questions, this may be a difficult class for you. Uh, so you may want to think about whether or not you want to stay in the course or move to a hybrid or an in-person uh, course. I always like to say that when you take an online course, you need to have a good computer uh, that you can get to and you can use when you need to use it. Uh, you need to have a good place to uh, study. Uh, that is where you're not going to have distractions and you need to make sure that you have good study skills and you should go over study skills such as planning, scheduling, oh, I need to blow my nose,
excuse me, I sneezed. Uh, planning, scheduling, uh, and uh, also how to read uh, material and take notes, and how to watch video lectures and take notes. So what about our specific class? IO psychology is psychology applied to work, so anything about the workplace or work uh, that has to do with psychology is IO psychology. This course is going to be a survey of the field. Uh, I'm going to emphasize the basic skills and knowledge and especially fair testing, I mean fair employment testing and selection uh, because these are skills that are uh, or information that are basic to the field and if you are a practicing IO psychologist, you're going to be doing, you know, fair employment stuff, testing stuff, and selection stuff. Uh, if you've had business courses before, you'll notice that several of the topics are similar to business topics, and they are, uh, but we're coming at it from an experimental or research approach. Uh, so the content itself and the way we're going to be talking about things and coming to conclusions about things are going to be radically different. In terms of the mechanics of the course, there's going to be four elements. Uh, the weekly quizzes, uh, the weekly discussion board, the midterm exam, and the final exam. So, oh, I need to talk about each one individually. Uh, the quizzes are uh, online quizzes, of course. The course this course is 100% online. And uh, each uh, week we'll have a chapter quiz. And if we have any additional information that week, like a video lecture, uh, we may have a, uh, you know, a quiz associated to that. Uh, the quizzes will be up all semester long, except for when we're taking the midterm and uh, when we're taking the final exam. And you can take them as many times as you want, and Blackboard will uh, keep the highest score that you get. Uh, Weekly discussion board, I talk about that in a little bit, a couple slides from now, so I won't say that much about it. Midterm exam, uh, everything up until the midterm. Uh, mostly uh, what I'll do is choose from the quizzes. Final exam, comprehensive, the entire course. And again, I'll choose mainly from the quizzes. Uh, the quizzes and exams are multiple choice. And here are the grading weights. And I uh, wanted to mention about discussion boards. My discussion boards are more structured than probably other faculty that we've run into in online courses. I have a very structured original and then a structured follow-up. Uh, and I do this mainly because if I ask students to reply, you know, the replies are, gee, that's a really great idea or that's interesting. And so I want a little bit more. So uh, I have instructions for the follow-ups. and. You may ask why the discussion boards. Uh, I ask myself that sometimes also. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be served better if I just had, uh, you know, uh, people turn in the original and follow-ups? Well, first of all, Blackboard has a really messed up system to allow follow-ups that's not on a discussion board, so that's really the main reason. Uh, but also. Uh, I like the idea of you know requiring students to look at everybody's posts and choose which one they would like to respond to. So uh, there's that you know element of the discussion board. Uh, in terms of you know how students have done on these discussion boards, my advice would be to read and follow the instructions carefully. And that's very important because often in feedback I'll give students a, a grade they're unhappy with. And they're saying, hey, you, you didn't give me any comments. Why, why did I get this C or D or whatever? And I usually say, you tell me. Uh, because what the student didn't do is they didn't read or they didn't follow the instructions. And uh, I already wrote down the instructions once, so I'm not going to write them down again to tell you exactly why. So I'm going to very seriously ask, me, ask you to tell me why, if you want feedback you have to begin the process by going over uh, the instructions again and recognizing what you missed the first time. Uh, syllabus, uh, take a look at the syllabus, uh, look at the calendar and the due dates, the policy about late work, 
online office hours. Uh, that's the form that you can use to talk about anything in the class. Unless it's personal, then email me. Uh, and uh, you can also take a look at week one, which is working online and get started on that. And so let me give you a, a little bit more depth, in depth, uh, you know, introduction to the field. Uh, these slides are prepared slides by the Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology, PSYOP. And I always like to touch upon these, uh, at least this uh, introductory set, uh, because you know, uh, it does tie in what we're doing with the professional field. PSYOP is a pretty powerful uh, you know, uh, you know, professional organization. They also have a very powerful or very active uh, student uh, you know, division. So if you are interested in, in IO psychology, I would encourage you to join their student uh, section uh, and uh, you know, get information from them about being an industrial organizational psychologist. Uh, and in general, I agree with the things they say, but I like the different flavor that they have because uh, PSYOP is uh, filled with mostly uh, you know, applied and, and you know, non-academic IO psychologists and a whole lot of academic uh, IO psychologists. So it's really good to see the the flavor that you know this mixed field gives. So what is IO psychology? Agreeing with what I said, it's the application of psychological principles to the workplace, and it's helping people do their jobs, helping employers treat employees fairly helping uh, make jobs more interesting and satisfying, and helping workers be more productive. Uh, treating employees fairly, whenever you see fairly uh, in this course, we're talking about you know, employment law, the EEOC, the Equal uh, Employment Opportunity Commission laws, which are federal laws about treating employees fairly, fairly in terms of uh, the protected uh, classes which are gender, race, ethnicity, uh, you know, uh, national background, uh, handicap or physical status, uh, veteran status, and age. Uh, and I believe I covered them all. The law of the land in the United States is you cannot discriminate uh, in the job, on, in the workplace, on any of those protected classes. Uh, so, uh, what we do is we want to make sure that we're treating people uh, fairly and uh, equally when we select people for jobs, when we provide training to help people do better on their jobs, when we reward people with promotion and raises, and also to address issues of harassment against people who are in those protected classes. And another important element of that is assessing performance accurately. Most of these protected classes have stereotypes and stigmas associated with them, and so it's very difficult to evaluate people accurately without the lens of the stigma or the stereotype involved. So this is a very interesting and unique problem. How do we evaluate employees fairly who may be of a different background uh, than uh, the evaluator? making jobs more interesting and satisfying. Uh, so uh, IO psychologists are de designing jobs that people will find satisfying, where they s have a sense of uh, being rewarded for their work, uh, that they feel that they are doing something productive and doing something important, and they have a sense of well-being based on their job. Uh, also, designing workplaces which are safe and also efficient, and we call that area human factors, uh, motivating employees to prefer, perform, and creating work teams that work well together. Uh, many, many jobs are now you know, uh, you know, doing work based on work teams, and so it's important to uh, be able to get diverse individuals to work together. 
and helping people be more, be more productive, designing work patterns that enhance efficiency, providing skill training and development, uh, helping to meet the challenges of competition, and moving past downsizing. And in fact, while fair employment and testing and hiring is one of the, the, the largest areas of employment of IO psychologists, the second highest is skill training and development. And so this is a major area in which IO psychologists work in. And here's the example of the flavor of, uh, you know, applied IO psychologists moving past downsizing. That is, what do you do when you fire people? Uh, and there are IO psychologists whose job is to uh, fire people or to design programs in which a company will fire people. Uh, and I'm talking about the whole process of termination of you know the actual termination interview or announcement and also any support that the uh, company would like to give to the uh, terminated employee. And then also on the other hand what happens after you have fired many people uh, you know, in a company, in an office, in a factory. Uh, morale is low, people are, you know, concerned, they're not happy, and so you have to deal with the repercussions of the, you know, repercussions on the remaining employees. This is something that I, as an academic IO psychologist, rarely think about, but that's something that's very important to apply IO psychologists. And that's it for the introductory lecture. Any questions? Online office hours. So I'll see you there. Bye-bye.